Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about where the market went this past week, where everything the market's going this coming week. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit the subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. So if you trade that, you'll definitely want to subscribe. It's taken me just over two years to become consistently profitable. Lots of trial and error, lots of lesson learned, lots of pain. But over time, I became more consistent. And I believe that you will as well if you haven't yet already. So without further ado, let's dive into the charts. Before we do that, Make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos just like this. I do a market analysis twice a week with the trades I'm in. Now we can dive into the charts. Let's look at ES right now or on uh, the daily chart. And previous video I said that we'd be expecting us to retest the lows on ES and NASDAQ because daily is still bearish, weekly is still bearish, and the lower time frames were bullish, but we've rolled over now. If you just look from left, left to right, we have lower swing lows, lower swing lows. Now on the daily, previous videos, you could argue that this was a swing high, we made it low, and then we grabbed liquidity and pushed above these highs, so we shifted into a bullish market structure, but the last swing low is just right here, so that means we're, we're bullish, until we pushed up, we made a higher swing low here, pushed up, and then failed uh, as of Wednesday, so as of Wednesday, daily is bearish again on ES, and we're back at that 200 day, NASDAQ, similar idea where we were bullish bullish made a higher swing swing low came up failed and broke down so now since we're bearish the most obvious conclusion to draw is that we're likely going to be targeting the 14,600 area before any more upside and this that's exactly what it looks like on the weekly chart i'll show you that in a moment but these are zones i have drawn out so you know we might just dip the dip below tomorrow and i think that we'll actually have a bounce and probably end green on the day uh, I think that you know we're coming into the, the zone I have drawn here, so we may find uh, a bit of support there. But eventual target at some point by the end of October is, is likely you know 14,600 for the Nasdaq to 14,400. That's what I have at least. And then from there, I think that we will get that rally into the end of the year. Now, like I said in the last video as well, Nasdaq has been holding up better than ES, and it is still stronger. So. I think the tables will turn for a bit. I think that NASDAQ will start to become weaker and possibly uh, ES maybe does a double bottom. NASDAQ just sweeps the low. I don't think that we're going to get a lot more downside. I really do think that the bottom for NASDAQ is around that 14,600 to 14,400. And then on ES, I think that we'll either double bottom, get to you know, the 4270 or so, or we cut just below and we get to about 4220 to 4200 because there is some support to the left. However, let's zoom out to the weekly chart so we can see what's happening a little more. Nothing bullish here. If you just look, we pushed up extremely high. We came back, we broke market structure, now we we're bearish. We just rallied into resistance, sold off, and then found some support, rallied up, and couldn't even get up into the top, just got into the fair value gap here on the weekly chart, and rejected again. So now obvious target is you know sweeping the lows again. If we go to the, the NASDAQ, very similar picture, holding up a little better, but very similar picture. Lots of empty trading from 14,500 to 13,800. So we could fall into there. I, I just don't think we will yet. I think once we have the recession next year, then we could fall into there. But I think for now, we could find some support and then rally back up. However, before I go any further, I have to show something that is extremely concerning. If we come down and take a look at the spread between the 10 and two year. Every single time we get up to 0%, I have an alert here, every single time we get up to 0% again, a recession starts. So we've inverted the yield curve and pff, this week and today, we went up massively, massively towards that 0%. So again, every single time in the history, if you just go pull up the two and 10 year spread, every single time we've gone negative, once we've come back out of negative, there was a recession that triggered. And then a stock market sell off, you know, 20%, 30%. So we're close to that, which means we're close to a lot more downside. Now, I think that we may get some more time bought where I think that we could get, you know, a year end rally. And then January, first quarter, starts recession and starts the crash, essentially a crash because it likely will be a 20% correction uh, in the markets, which means individual stocks will be down a lot more. So now we can continue back on to, to the VIX and the dollar. So VIX on the weekly chart, that looks extremely bullish, right? If you go to the daily chart, extremely bullish. When the VIX goes up, the market goes down. And we held the 200-day moving average. I said once we held the 200-day moving average here, it was, the, it was the Monday, 
that it was not looking good because that means that the VIX is very strong and if the VIX is very strong, the market's gonna continue to go lower. Uh, I don't really do a m much technical analysis on the VIX. Uh, I just know that usually the 250 day moving average uh, really tell where it's likely to go. If it holds around those levels and it can continue higher or if it gets rejected off of them, then it can continue lower. We're holding so because the VIX is strong, uh, the market can, can go much lower. Not a lot to say there. DXY though, we are kind of doing this bullish flag, but we broke market structures at the downside. We came up and then we're kind of just buying time. So I personally think that DXY will sell off and cool off for a bit and that's how we'll get the rally. But uh, I think that NASDAQ and ES need to retest the lows first in the next one or two weeks. Uh, and then DXY will likely cool off more and we'll get the year end rally before the recession that hits in January, 2024. So I had been holding short. I took profit on 90% of my short. I moved my stops to break even up at 15,200. So I'm, I don't have much of a, of a position on right now. And if you're looking to get into any trades right now, there's nothing right now, realistically. If you were bullish, if you, you know, had a bull bias, then you could look for longs now and just have your stops below the lows. But it's not wise because I just showed you everything's pretty bearish right now. If you wanted to get in a long, I would at least wait for one hour bullish market structure shift to the upside or a four hour, uh, preferably a four hour. But if you really want to get in, then you could get in on a one hour bullish market structure shift. Uh, meaning right now we have nothing but lower swing lows, lower swing highs. If we put in a low here and then push back up and took out these highs to the left at 50,100, then you can get in a long and you just target the next point of liquidity. So, you know, say we broke it and then had a retest down at this level, you would get in a long. Uh, basically I'm saying if, if let's say we pushed up, broke that and then had a retest here, you get it, get it in the long now because that's confirmation of, of a bullish market structure shift on the one hour and then just put the stop below the last swing low on the one hour, say if that was right here for whatever reason, and then TP would be the next sweep of liquidity, so it'd be at 50,229. So basically this would be the long trade, you know, 1.1R, nothing amazing, but there's no reason to look for longs is what I'm trying to say until we get at least something like this at least preferably on the four hour chart instead though so for the four hour chart if we wanted that to happen we would have to get a four hour close of 50,144 so same idea let's say we did this, get this bottom we would have to push up get rejected push up and then get the get the retest here that's when we could go into the long and then let's say we had the four hour swing low that moved up and it was back here then at least we can have a tighter stop and then target the next liquidity. Uh, first one would be this wick here at 50,220. Next one would be at 15,310. So basically that would be a long trade once we got more confirmation on the four hour. But no, we can't get in shorts right now. So again, if you wanted to get in a short, same idea. Uh, if we traded up into this level, then we would just short this level. If you're bearish, we would just short this level here and then stop would be above this wick and then tp would be whatever low we set back down here now you can see two trades on isaac based on if you have a short bias or a bull bias right now we have short bias because of the market structure so what we'd want to do is wait for price to come up here short this level target the lows again stop above that that wick high that's going to conclude this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Subscribe for more videos just like this. I post two videos a week, one every Sunday and one every Thursday night. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.